Hello and welcome to uh, Season 3 of the Black Hole Podcast entitled Technology Startup. Uh, And that's right, I'm still looking for a team to split the Nobel Peace Prize with. It's a uh, platform for, we're trying to build a platform for elected officials to post a daily podcast of their events of the day, post topics and decisions to be voted on by their constituents, and to publish their previous day's schedule along with a description of each person they met with. In addition, I think they should be forced to uh, post how much taxpayer money they've used on themselves. A lot of these politicians get a per diem uh, and get reimbursements for trips and things that they do using taxpayer money. So I think we should have a running tally of how much each each politician has used of taxpayer money on themselves. Uh, so it's simple. You know, I think that if we make government officials accountable and transparent, you'll have less war and more peace. So why wouldn't we qualify for the Nobel Peace Prize? Or uh, you also have less corruption, which I know that's a big push right now in the federal U.S. federal government is to reduce the corruption elsewhere so we don't have immigrants uh, fleeing their countries into ours. And again, this is, uh, this is in the Constitution. The basis for this platform is in the Constitution. I'll go into that later. But I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's a technocrat. This Mitch guy's a technocrat. He wants to involve technology into every facet of the government. He's a technocrat. And it's, it's this new wave of people, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's incorrect. If you know anything about me, I question technology every way it's incorporated. And I've written about it extensively. But I'll pose you this question. What if in the 1960s and 1970s, when it was cheap to print newspaper, these, this system was put into place? This scope platform I'm proposing, instead of it being a platform, it's a system that the government is accountable and transparent. So each elected official gets an allotment of words, of, of a column in the newspaper, um, Each newspaper is put together locally. So you have your federal politicians get the cover. And then the state politicians get the next two leaves inside the paper. And then your local officials get the the final leaves inside the paper. So as you build this newspaper, you go in and out. You know, the, the outside leaves, the cover will go everywhere in the state. You know, uh, so on and so forth, working down to the local level. And you send these out and put these together. So each newspaper is put together locally. And at the end of each uh, politician's little blurb about their daily proceedings, their daily decisions, topics that they want to be voted on, there's a little cutout ballot for the topics and decisions to be voted on. You cut that out. You have to pay the postage. The newspaper would be free. But you have to pay the postage to send it to your elected official. You send it in, and uh, their staff tallies up the uh, the ballots, and it helps them make decisions that are more accountable to the public instead of operating secretly and passing secret laws in a secret building somewhere in your state that they don't even bother to inform you what they passed. They just arrest you with a police force uh, designed to arrest the maximum amount of people. So... What if we did that? Uh, what if we had that since the 1960s and 1970s when it was cheap to make to print papers? So you could customize them more easily. Uh, you know, maybe if we weren't so distracted by war and civil rights, the hippies would have protested for transparency in the government, and this wouldn't even be an issue. But we're here now, so let's make it an online platform. It could be delivered in analog form. It could have been delivered... 60 years ago in analog form and our government would be more accountable and transparent and so again this is in it's in the constitution and uh 
excuse me while I grab my copy of the Constitution. Uh, I quote Section 5, Paragraph 3. Each house shall keep a journal of its proceedings and from time to time publish the same, accepting such parts as may be in their judgment require secrecy, and the yeas and nays of the members of either house on any question shall, at the desire of one-fifth of those present, be entered on the journal. So, the wording of this paragraph in the Constitution, you know, it, uh, it implies that uh, the superior wisdom of the Founding Fathers in writing this, their wording, they say, from time to time. So at the time, there was leaflets, there was newspapers, sparse and few and far between, but that was a form of media to distribute a journal. Um, but they didn't know what the future of media would be, so they left it open from time to time. At that point, it was probably week to week or month to month, but now we have the technology to deliver minute to minute, hour to hour, second to second. So they left it open like that, knowing that media would evolve and that the government should be held more accountable even to the second possibly. So it can be assumed as technology evolved, the journal would move from the body, the houses, to the individual. As the technology for this accountability paragraph in the Constitution evolved, as technology evolved to allow each individual to keep their own journal, whether it's a podcast journal or a written journal that's published on their websites, which a lot of politicians do try. They do put out a website and uh, publish things on their social media. Um, again, this is the wisdom of the Founding Fathers. We can assume that it would, it, it would expand to the individual. And that's what I'm proposing. Let's do it. Let's make it easy for politicians to keep a journal of their proceedings, of their daily activities, publish their schedule, and publish decisions and topics that their constituents can vote on, and hypothetically, then they vote in the same manner. They don't have to, uh, but this would help guide them in their decisions. So I've proposed this, this technology startup company, and I, in the last episode, I read the founding documents, and um, I don't think I'm going to put this in the founding con documents, but as a courtesy, we will design this company, since it's in the Constitution, uh, to split off. So the politics, the elected officials section of the internet platform, scope internet platform, is designed to be taken over by the government and uh, controlled by the government, facilitated by the government, should they choose to police themselves like they should have back in the 60s and 70s. Um, so it's designed to break off, but we'll keep, we'll retain ownership to expand into other markets. Because the ultimate goal is transparency and accountability in all leadership, not just elected officials. So there's a lot of places for this company to expand. And we can relinquish, we'll start with the politicians, the elected officials, the people in power, and make them accountable and transparent. And then if they choose to police themselves to provide in the budget the means to uh, provide this internet platform, we'll release control to them as a courtesy and continue on with our mission to have accountability in all leadership. The second courtesy I'd like to extend is that all legally elected officials can vote on the future of this company. So I said in the last episode, it's a $100 buy-in, $100 a share. You get voting rights. You get other rights guaranteed to you, but you get voting rights. The uh, executive board can override all votes, but we'll try to stay true to the uh, voting of the ownership of the company. Uh, so, you know, that's, you don't have, elected officials, legally elected officials don't have to pay the $100 buy-in to uh, 
have own, a, a one share ownership in the company. Um, but I think it would be interesting if some of these politicians put their money where their mouth was and invested in this company and started it off so that we could get this thing rolling. Um, but uh, they don't have to. They all are welcome to vote on the platform once we can extend it past beta testing to cover enough people to have the thousands and thousands of elected officials vote on the future of this company and on every decision on this company. And as I said, if you subscribe to this podcast, this will be the update of the company, as well as a couple other companies I'm trying to form until they get so uh, busy that we have to split those podcasts off. But this is the Transparency Podcast, where decisions and uh, topics will be brought up that can be voted on by shareholders and ownership and involved parties and elected officials. So those are my two courtesies. I'm not going to put them in the founding document unless you vote that we should put those right in the founding documents. Uh, I'm waiting to incorporate an LLC with that founding document I read before. Uh, until I can build a little bit of a team here, I want to see if they want to be named on the on the uh, when I form the LLC. Um, so I'm looking for computer science people to help build this thing. But those are my two courtesies. We'll design the company so that it's easily split off the elected officials segment of it and uh, given over to the federal or state or local government uh, as all one coherent thing so that anywhere you are, you live, you can type in your address and it comes up all the cons- all the uh, elected officials that you can vote on and you can go to their, uh, listen to their podcast, see their schedule, all that stuff. Um, the second courtesy is that all legally elected officials can vote on the company issues and topics and steer the future of this company. So the new business for the company, Scope, nickname Scope Internet Platform. New businesses, I secured a domain name uh, yesterday. I'm not going to uh, release the name that I secured but uh, you should feel safe in keeping scope in your uh, founding documents, as I said in the previous episode, if you're trying to found a similar company in your country. Um, So the next step, I'm going to advertise on LinkedIn or Craigslist for a computer science person capable of creating the first phase of the scope internet platform which is just a simple website where uh, people can go and vote on whether they want their elected officials to be transparent in this way it logs every voters address uh, but just their zip codes at first they don't have to give up their physical address until we have the capabilities of looking up all their elected officials from their uh, physical address so we're just doing zips for now unless they're out of the country Um, then they can put their full address and then uh, that would that would go into a database and also what we're trying to do is uh, create an email list of from the voters so they put their email in their zip code and the email list will auto generate so that we can update them when we're into the next phase of the scope internet platform so looking for someone capable of providing this first phase, this this simple uh, web page uh, that has a database kind of a system to it and uh, generates a email list that we can save onto someone's email. Um, so that's my next step. I'm going to start advertising. Uh, again, you can email me through my websites, plotm.com. That's plot, the letter M, dot com or mitch4mayor.com that's mitch the number four mayor.com there's email uh, forms on there that you can uh, fill out some information a little bit of dial a little bit of a message and it'll go to my email and uh, just let me know if you're interested in your computer science person and uh, interested in uh, helping me build this thing because that's not my strong point. My strong point is communication with stockholders, ownership, 
and uh, business side. I've run several businesses. So, um, so that's the uh, new business and the next step. Uh, also, if you'd like to invest, you can contact me in the same manner. Just let me know that you're looking to invest. And uh, so I'm going to close out the uh, podcast with an update on the Utica B clothing line. This is the clothing line that we're trying to launch, that uh, launch a platform that will allow people who are disabled, have disabilities, physical disabilities mostly, to design their own clothes that are um, catered to their disability. Event. So that's the eventual goal of this clothing line. Uh it can be found on my website, plotm.com, under the Utica B tab. I only have two shirts up right now. I'm going to try to, I'm going to be posting some other shirts that I've already designed, but I'm going to try to put up a new design every month or every few weeks. And if you buy $100 worth of merchandise from the Utica B clothing line, you'll be considered an owner and you'll be able to vote on the, on the future of that company as well. Like I said, I'm all about transparency, voting on decisions and topics and where it should go. So that's that. Uh, so, oh, what, what's that, Zelda? Sorry, my podcast producer, Zelda, is telling me I should wrap it up. So I'm trying to keep these under 20 minutes. I'm doing a good job, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks, Zelda. Um, so I'll just mention my sponsor, uh, 542 Prince. If uh, you need a design, screen printed or embroidered on a garment of clothing, go to 542prints.com, contact Nick, and we'll uh, get you your design on an article of clothing. Uh, They're kind of partnering up with the Utica B clothing line, helping me out with that. So So I'm plugging them as a sponsor, even though they don't really pay me monetarily for the podcast. If you would like to... Advertiser sponsors this podcast monetarily, or uh, in other in trade, and for something in trade, I guess. Um, contact me through my websites. That's uh, plotm.com and mitchformayor.com. So, just wanted to give you an update. It's been a month since I that, since I launched episode one of the uh, season three, the technology startup podcast. And I just want to do a quick update. It might be another month before I even get a response to any of these advertisements for uh, computer science people. If you know someone, please share this with them. And uh, we live in the world of remote working now, so I guess it doesn't really matter. It'd be nice if they lived in Pittsburgh, if we could eventually get an office. But we'll work remotely if that's what has to happen. So uh, no matter where you are, uh, you can help build this thing. So thanks for listening. And, uh, until next time, take care and thanks.